is Netflix new horror movie based on actual events? If you have been following social media over the last couple of days, you've likely heard about the Netflix movie Veronica, which is reportedly so scary that some people can't make it to the end without flipping their lights on. While I personally don't think it is particularly terrifying, many people do say otherwise. And therefore, it's a good thing that everybody perceives those kind of movies differently, am I right? Today, we want to check out the real events that inspired the Netflix movie Veronica and shed some light on the original police report of this eerie and paranormal case. And please take a second to subscribe to my channel Frostmare and hit the bell notification icon to never miss any of my new creepy uploads. Before we take a look at the real case behind the Veronica movie, which is mostly referred to as the Vallecas case, here is a short introduction of how the whole scary plot is condensed in Netflix show. Veronica is a new horror movie directed by Paco Plaza, who is best known for 2007's zombie horror movie Wreck. The movie was released on Netflix last Monday and was the reason that many people were having trouble sleeping at night. After the movie starts off with an emergency call, we slowly learn about the paranormal case that took place in the residence of Veronica's family. During the many different chapters of the movie, on-screen texts assert specific addresses, times and dates in which the events on screen took place. The movie is even naming the police station in Madrid that took the initial emergency call. We are accompanied by different photographs that allegedly stem from the residents. Then we learn that the movie's story is based on the police report filed by the detective in charge of the case. At least, that is what the text reads. After this intro, the movie kicks off the plot about three days prior to the filing of the police report. Veronica, displayed by Sandra Escasena, wakes up her younger twin sisters and younger brother and makes them ready for school. She mostly takes care of her siblings all by her own, since her mom works long and late hours at a nearby diner almost every day of the week. It's a special day, because today an eclipse is supposed to take place. Veronica and two of her friends plan to use the eclipse's power to fuel a ritual that they are planning on holding in the school's basement during the event. The girl wants to use a Ouija board to reach out to her deceased father. But unfortunately, the girls reach out to something else, more evil and sinister, and closer to a real demon. The being follows her home and drapes its long, spindly shadow over her whole family that she has been forced to protect. We then jump forward to June 15th, 1991 which is exactly three days after their seance. This is the night where detective Jose Ramon Romero was called up to the home on 8 Gerardo Nunes Street in response to a phone call that was asking for immediate help. And this is the premise of the movie version. But what did really went down at 8 Gerardo Nunes Street? It is believed that the police report of the case is real. Scans are available to the public online with a glut of write-ups around the 20th anniversary of what many people now know as the Vallecas case, which has been spread around many Spanish and even South American paranormal websites. The case was named after a Madrid neighborhood where a young woman Estefania Gutierrez Lazaro reportedly performed the same seance at her school. It then is said that an actual nun broke her board, which caused in the abrupt ending an interruption of the initial ritual. 
This was what many believed, the point at which a dark door into the abyss was opened. Something evil attached itself to Estefania the same day. After that, she went through months of experiencing seizures and different kinds of hallucinations. What seemed to be a recurring pattern were the apparitions of dark shadows and presences were surrounding her. Never really finding a cure for that curse that plagued her over several months, Estefania lost her battle against the otherworldly energies and passed away. It was August 1991 when she could no longer keep the fight up against these entities. If we take a closer look at the police report, we realize that it doesn't particularly have much to do with her, but details about her possession that are very strange to say the least. And before we proceed any further, I would love to inform you that I started playing creepy games now and I would love to share this experience with my frosty family. I'm super nervous right now. I'm pretty sure we have to go the other direction. Oh! So if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any of my new uploads. I also have a new shirt design with the Frostmare 2018 logo in my merchandise shop now. Please see the link in the description. And now let's keep going. It is said in an unverifiable claim that Estefania inhaled a form of paranormal vapor from the broken glass pieces of the planchette with which she was playing the game. Another detail even shows that Estefania's family didn't get the police involved until more than a year after her death. But allegedly, many ghost encounters have taken place after the whole incident at the same residence many years later. The police visited the family home when they were reportedly hearing a loud noise which was stemming from an empty porch. And then, all of a sudden, the door to a closed wardrobe, which was situated in the living room, just opened out of nowhere. A cross with Jesus fell from the wall and separated the little figure from the wood, and a large brown stain appeared. Although the police report might not appear as spectacular as the movie itself, the involved officers described the cases that transpired afterwards as a situation of mystery and rarity. A television special even investigated the case in the family home and features a demonologist and paranormal expert who caught unsettling EVPs of an entity, speaking of a grandpa. A middle-aged woman who was part of Tristan's team seems to get possessed during one of the investigations of the family house. After the woman tries to make contact with the evil spirits, the following events are really concerning. When asked about the case, director Paco Plaza said to a newspaper, In Spain, this story is very popular because it is, as we say in the film, the only time a police officer has said he has witnessed something paranormal and it's written in a report with an official police stamp and it's really impressive when you look at it. But I think when we tell something it becomes a story even if it's in the news. You only have to read the different newspapers to know how different reality is depending on who's telling the story. So I knew we were going to betray the real events. I just wanted to make a whole vision. What do you think about the dark details that caused the creation of the creepy tale of Veronica? Please let me know in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching guys. Please leave a like and subscribe for many more creepy videos. Stay frosty.